What's going on? My name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And today we're gonna to be talking about the JBC CD 2SH QF. And I'll be honest, if the model name confuses you, don't worry about it. That's not the main point of this video. The main point of this video is so that I can show you a station that I think will take you through your entire career where you won't have to upgrade, where you're gonna get something that's gonna just get the job done and you're not really gonna to have to worry about, was it my station? Do I have to overcome some sort of crazy knowledge gap to be able to use this other crappy station that I have? Nope. After this video, you're going to understand. So with that, let's take a look. See here. Let's move down to the old camera on the side here and let's take a look at this bad boy right here. So um, I'm just going to tell you about the things that I think are kind of pros and cons of these types of stations. Um, I would actually consider this a high tier station where a low and mid tier would probably be, a low tier station would be like a 900 series setup where you have to unscrew and screw in your, your, your air gapped uh, heating element area. And it's not the heating element, but the actual like uh, iron tip itself has to be sleeved over the, 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 the heating element and that causes an air gap, which causes insulation, blah, blah, blah. It's, it, they're, they're not as good to use. You can get any job done you want, but they're not the best to use. Then you have the mid tier stations with the, with the larger cartridge style tips, which you would find on like a Hako uh, FM203 uh, or something like that. Any, any of that's gonna fit into that mid-tier range. And then like I said, we got the high tier right here. Now, with that, what I think makes this high tier are a couple of the creature comforts, as well as the actual power that this thing pushes out. I've actually, I feel like this thing genuinely outperforms anything that it sits next to immediately. Like you see it instantly, right? So. Let's talk about these creature comforts, right? Because we know it's powerful now. I told you it was powerful. You just gotta trust me and you'll see, you'll see. So let's take the tip out. We do have a smaller tip to grip range on here. I don't know if we can see that that well on here. There we go. Um, and tip to grip would actually be the distance from here to your workpiece being right here. And you'll see with the mid tier stations, it goes back farther and then with the um, 900 series stations, it goes back even further, and the length of this tip to grip ratio actually creates stability or instability in your hand. So the closer you are to your work, the more stable you're gonna be. And you know when you get down into that deep level micro soldering and doing those crazy wild jumpers a little loop-de-loops and stuff, you're gonna need something a little more stable. So that's, that's the creature comfort number one right there. It helps your work, helps all kinds of stuff. Um, I love that, right? Now, the next thing here, in my opinion, that I love is the, the, the fact that it has a built-in brass sponge here, so you don't even have to play with that. It comes right built in. And the thing about brass sponges is that when they're on your desk, if they're not locked into something, even if they're in like a, like a holster themselves, you, you kind of got to lock them down, especially if you're trying to clean it real good or something like that. And I know maybe I'm a little harsh on my, my cleaning. I just like to really get that oxidation off. But having it built in, I really like that. Now... The third and final thing here that I really would say is a complete creature comfort that I enjoy that makes things really just nice for me is the one-handed operation of the actual handle itself. Um, with some of these other brands, it's a two-handed, you know, full attention situation with like the 900 series stuff. With the mid-series stuff, with the mid-tier stuff, you're looking at grabbing and pulling and doing all this other crazy stuff. There's no real automated way to, to one-handedly switch your tip, so it's still the two-handed method. But with this guy right here, Check this out, check this out. Right here, you see that there's a little hook and it's, it's kind of hard to see, but it's like a little outline. And I'll show you in the microscope here in a second, right? But, and isn't that cool? This thing's like totally invisible right now because of the green screen. This is actually green, so, you know, it's not really invisible, right? Um, you can come in here and you can hear this little hook. See how it's stuck in there now? Well, with one-handed operation, you can kind of base your hand right here and look at that. It's completely off. And maybe you want to switch to another one, right? You can come over here and, you know, some people keep them back here and stuff. And, you know, they'll, they'll gently set them upside down. I feel weird about leaving stuff upside down where I'm going to, like, push into it. So anytime that I'm going to, like, go in there and touch another one. So if this one was sitting in here or something, I took it out, I set it in there. That's two-handed. But if you had it in here, right, if you had it ready to go. So let's just say this dude's right here. And like I said, I'm real careful about having things kind of upside down like that. All I'm going to do is just lift it up like that. I just barely touched it, right? I lifted it up. You see it's just kind of way out there. We got the super long, you know, uh, tip to grip ratio, right? We're gonna pick the hole 
See, there's a couple holes on here of different sizes and calibers, right? And we're just gonna carefully set it in there and press down. Once you have done that, you are locked in, it'll start heating up, and that one-handed operation, especially if you're only using one or two tips a day, like genuinely, um, that, that's actually a really good segue right here, right? Um, these tips, it actually has got three different tips in this kit, and I just kinda wanna show you those. If I can get this bad boy off, one-handed operation, right? Let me, there we go. Kinda weird from the side. I always feel like I'm in front of it, so. Anyway, so, We've got our little tips here, and let's talk about those for a second. We're gonna set this to the side. Um, part of buying a kit is getting all the little you digs and things that you need in the middle, and for me, that's actually including the tips that you're probably gonna use. So we've got three of them on here. I think it's best if we jump over to the microscope and we take a look at these over here. Um, so we've got three of them. You can't really see them that well here, but we've got a point, a very fine micro point, and let me just let me just tell you, the micro point isn't used for a lot of work. You use it very rarely. I I really only include it because at some point maybe you'll use it for something, and if I don't include it, you're going to go buy it anyway, just because you saw somebody else use it. So I'm just going to include that in there, right? Um, the next one we have here is a J tip, and then we also have a knife point tip. So let's jump down here. Let's take a look. See, let's see what we got going on, and. Let's see if this is going to be what works for you, right? Oh, hey, man. I love these boards when I pick them up. These are just from class. Um, and, you know, since everybody's getting to train on all these boards, sometimes you find some really funny stuff in here. Um, but let's start with the little point, right? You can see that this one goes down and really just hits really anything you want. I really only recommend these for, like, fine, fine jumper work. I really wouldn't use it too much on any any kind of like regular components or anything. I would actually go and use the J tip if I had something that was just really kind of weird and awkward. Like maybe I had to like, you know, get under, you see I get under the side here. Hopefully that's in focus. Let's, there we go, a little bit better. Um, you know, if I need to come down and get under something like this, it might be easier to use the J tip, but that also leads us to general tip and nozzle selection theory, which is like, how do I choose the one for the job? And the truth is you always choose the biggest iron that you can fit on the joint. And if we apply that concept to the geometry here, we can see that if we go like this, it's basically a micro point. If we turn it, then we have a lot more thermal linkage, which is gonna be like more thermal bandwidth for the actual thermal energy to kind of push through to the board, right? It's just like internet bandwidth. If it's it's very thin, you're gonna be spending days downloading something, it'll take forever to heat up. And if you got more power, maybe you can overcome it with basic standard heat theory, right? Which is, you know, 50% over, and then you kind of go from there. 50% over the lowest damage point of the lowest common, that, you gotta watch the video, I'll tell you all about it. But moral of the story is, this can help you do that by kind of turning it a little bit, right? Then we have the final tip here, which is gonna be the knife tip. And this knife tip is very, very, very versatile. I would say that I use it for almost everything, uh, like 98% of the work. Like the, you can do that or, you know, any of these big, big ones like this, like is, you'll see, watch this. If you take a look here, we see that it's got a nice little point on it and, you know, the point is great because you can get a lot of the work done with a lot more thermal linkage. Remember I keep telling you about that and a thermal bandwidth and there's more thermal capacity in the iron itself because it's got more thermal mass, right? Um, so we see here that it's got a nice point for us to work with if we wanted to come down and do some really small stuff, pss, pss, whatever, you, you know, making the sounds up as we go. But check this out. If we want to do something big, we've got room for that. In fact, if we wanted to come do quite a few things, we could come down here and we could actually run it across multiple pins at the same time, which is gonna heat up the thermal mass of the entire area, making your life easier, might make it easier for ground plane work, right? Um, now, let's do this though. Let's modify our tip geometry. Now we can do one at a time. You guys see where I'm going with this? There is a lot of versatility to this kit, and this is a very powerful kit. Genuinely, I just love this JBC station. It, you know, even if you do not get this specific station, just know that this brand is a really good brand, and you really can't go wrong with much of any of it. Um, I would say for any kind of like small to medium-sized PCBs, anything like phones, tablets, 
I mean, any, any really even consoles for the most part, this is going to work great with. Um, just make sure that you're getting the tip that is meant for that joint size. So anyway, I've talked on long enough. I hope that this helps you kind of, you know, in your journey to find the right soldering station for you. I do really love the JBCs, this one being the CD2SHQF. Gosh, that is a terrible thing to, to just whip out there. I've actually got it written on a piece of paper under the lens. But anyway, I'll catch you later, and good luck in your journey to the center of repair.